If you want to get organized for 2024, I'm going to show you where to start, what to buy, and what not to waste your time with. Don't waste time worrying about if your food looks pretty in your cabinets or in your pantry. Life's short, friend, and food is expensive. I'm not worried about rainbows. I'm worried about maximizing the space, getting as much storage as possible. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look around your kitchen and just look at it differently. How can we carve out more food storage? And we're gonna start in a pantry. If you have a closet that's really being underutilized, even a cabinet that's kind of filled with junk, turn it into a Costco corner. I have this closet across from my pantry where I've just been throwing stuff because it doesn't have any storage and we don't need it for coats. So I'm gonna transform it with an old shelf from the garage into a Costco corner. kind of excited about this Costco corner. Here's the truth. I don't love Costco and I don't love buying in bulk. But in these times, sometimes if you got a good sale on something you use all the time, it makes sense to stock up. Having a place for it to go when it doesn't fit in the pantry means it's not clutter. I also have space for this stuff too. So like, look around your house. Do you have a wasted cabinet, a wasted closet that you're storing things you're not using and don't love? Declutter it and make yourself a Costco corner today. One of the best ways to create more storage is turning a door into storage with an over the door storage rack, just like this. This is the alpha over the door rack from the container store. I use mine for cleaning supplies, but listen, perfect to make a pantry, perfect for any storage you need. If you have a door, you can turn it into storage in literally minutes. You can also use the inside of your cabinet doors for more storage. So add 3M strips for hooks for like measuring cups, or you can have clips for like different sauces or little drawer dividers with 3M strips and store actual food right inside the cabinet door. Maximize the storage that you do have with can risers or can organizers and those tiered shelves, even the ones from the dollar store, mean that you can get double the food in your existing cabinet. And one of my favorite ways to really maximize space are using big baskets just like this. Not only can you fit a lot more and go higher with a basket, take things out of the box and you can really triple your space, but you can get to the stuff in the back this way. So just slide the basket out so food isn't getting lost and forgotten about at the back of your cabinet. If you have kids or you just really love snacks, Creating a snack drawer or snack cabinet was literally the best thing I've ever done because we save time every single day. It just makes making a lunch or grabbing a snack really fast and easy. Take things out of boxes and you can triple your storage and just make yourself a little snack station or lunch making station in your house. And of course, don't forget about your freezer. I love these tall, skinny bins for any type of freezer that you have. It just consolidates and contains your different food, takes advantage of the vertical space, and it keeps it tidy all the time. Don't waste time organizing those low traffic areas that aren't gonna make a big difference first, like under the kitchen sink or your linen closet or a junk drawer. Tackle those high traffic areas. Your entranceway is the perfect place to start because it's the first thing you see when you enter the home and when it's organized, it stops the mess at the door. Our entranceway needs love and with a family of five, lots of coats and shoes and boots, we're tripping over it. We're gonna ditch the hangers and create more of a mudroom right here in this little nook that used to be just where garbage cans were stored. I'm gonna use some inexpensive hooks, maybe a coat tree, definitely shoe storage, and transform this on a budget and in minutes. In just a few minutes, I now have homes for all the wet coats and wet boots and muddy stuff right in the entranceway, but it's also important to make space if you're like me and you always forget to take the reusable shopping bags back to your car, make a home for those so they're not just clutter in your landing way. Everything needs a home, like your keys need a home, glasses, wallet, whatever it is that you come in and you just kind of 
drop, create a space for it, whether it's hooks or a cabinet like this Ikea shoe cabinet, something to really capture the clutter. And the next thing you need is a command center because mail is like a huge issue. It doesn't have to be fancy. This is just quick files so I can drop in papers and bills that need to be paid, things that need to be filed. So it's not a pile on my counter. One of the biggest sources of clutter is memory items, believe it or not. Like you come in and you have report cards or artwork or something special that someone has sent you and it ends up in a pile. So what I like to do is of course have a memory bin for each family member, but I am lazy friends. So I have a bin in my entranceway where I can literally just put special things and then every now and then go through, take everything out and sort and organize it giving you like a memory dumping zone in your entranceway or in your kitchen will definitely stop the clutter. Put a recycling bin right in your entranceway so when you have all the junk mail and the flyers and the crap you don't want, the envelopes, immediately just put it in the recycling so it doesn't end up on your counter. It's a little tip to keep your entire house tidier. And that's what organizing your entranceway is all about. It's stopping the clutter at the door. Don't put too much pressure on yourself and really focus on having it look minimal all the time. That's kind of unrealistic. Even minimalists have stuff and you need places for that stuff to go. So I love having big clutter catchers all throughout my house just like this, whether it's for toys or dog toys or blankets and pillows, all the stuff that we have in our house. This is a great clutter catcher. I also love baskets just like this for clutter catchers, especially on the counter for all of the papers you want to deal with or just stuff that you got to put away later. This, it's nice and tall and thin. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but it catches all the clutter. You know all that stuff that you have in your house that you have no idea where it should go? It's like the what do I do with this stuff? You make a what the heck do I do with this stuff place. I decluttered a bunch of cleaning supplies and things I wasn't using and then just have bins for the things that I was leaving out on the counter. It's like random clutter catching space and it is amazing for keeping everything tidier. Sometimes your piles and your mess can actually be a good thing. It's really showing you where your home organization is lacking. This stuff probably doesn't have a home, so why not create one where you naturally put stuff down? If you pile papers here, have a little paper system. If you have just random junk, create another junk drawer really close by. All of those clothes that you've worn, but maybe they're not dirty enough to wash yet, have some hooks, give this stuff a place to go. Your homeless clutter is telling you exactly the type of organization you need. And if some of the stuff that you see has a home already, but it's like too hard to put it there, make a new home. Because home organization is about ease of use. It's about being able to put things away just as easy as it is to put it down. I don't think you should waste your time with dollar store or like cheap hacks for organization. I used to be all about that. I was like dollar store organizing queen. But what I found was the bins would break or those hacks I would see on TikTok would never last and I was actually wasting money. So now I would rather spend a little bit more on a container that's going to last forever. I'm actually saving money. This is what I found. Buying a good quality container for my stuff is definitely a money saving option. This is my favorite bin of all time. This is the Woven Water Hyacinth bin. They start at $14. This will last me my entire life. Not only is it beautiful and sustainable, but it's super sturdy. I could load this thing up. It's never gonna break or crack or get damaged. These are a must. I really like these wood options. There's actually a ton of wood options for organizing. This thing's lasting forever. And I used wood inside my parents' pantry too. Beautiful. It's never gonna crack and never gonna break. Metal bins are also a really good option. Again, these things are never going anywhere. If you really do wanna go with plastic and you're on a budget, 
this is a good option. Unlike the dollar store stuff, these are thick, good quality plastic that will last you forever. I use these everywhere, under the sink, in my freezer. They're great for toys. They come in a ton of different sizes and they start at $3.99. So it's not gonna break the bank, but you're not gonna have to replace these. I still do actually love dollar store containers for those areas that aren't high traffic or drawer dividers. Those are good quality for the price, but when it comes to like your everyday organizing bins, honestly, I'd rather see you use cereal boxes or Amazon boxes instead of spending money on the Dollar Tree stuff. I know it's only $1.25, but it's not gonna last. You're wasting your money. It's going to break and it's gonna end up in the trash. So save your money, save up for the good stuff, and in the meantime, just use whatever you can find. Thanks so much for watching. I have a ton of awesome decluttering and organizing videos coming up in January, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video, and I'll see you soon. Before I jump into the end story, listen, I have a 30-day boot camp, and I'm just reminding you of it because if you really want to get organized and you need me to kick your butt to make it happen, I have a boot camp that walks you through every different space in your home, and I'm like your coach. It's tough love. There's a little bit of screaming, but a lot of motivation, and you can do this at your own pace, or you can crush it every day for 30 minutes, and by the end of January, your house will be organized, guaranteed, or your money back. Did I mention it's only 30 bucks? A dollar a day for an organized 2024? Yes, please. Check that out in the description below and I'm gonna pin it in the comments. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Oh, it's a new year, it's a new us. Do you have a new year's resolution? Last year, I didn't have like a resolution. I had big goals for myself. I've achieved none, none. 2023, it was not great for me. It wasn't that anything bad happened. I just like, I wasn't focused on achieving the things that matter. So I'm rewind. I'm having the same goals this year. I'm going to run 5k. That's all I'm running 5k friends. It's been on my vision board for five years. This is the year I'm going to make that happen. Possibly. No, def I'm definitely running 5K. And also, I'm finishing that zombie book, man. I didn't even dust it off. That's so embarrassing. Uh, but this is the year, or a book. I'm writing something this year because I want to, and life is short. And the years, the older I get, the faster the years like slip through my fingers. And I want to be proud of myself this year. But I'm curious what your goals are for 2024. New Year's resolutions kind of suck sometimes because it puts pressure on ourselves and if we fail, but I feel like if it's a goal and we have a whole year to achieve it, it's okay if we fail sometimes. It doesn't have to be perfect or all or nothing. We just get back on the horse and keep chipping away at that goal. So let me know in the comments below what your goal is and maybe we can like hold each other accountable. 5K man. I'm going to do couch to 5K. I'll see you guys next time.